Hi, and welcome to Nuxtox Creative Studio. In today's video, I'll be showing you some quick color correction methods that you can use inside of Caden Live. I have a Caden Live class available on Skillshare if you're interested. The link is in the description below, and you get the first month free of Skillshare. Now, we'll be working on two separate clips. They're both downloaded from Pixels. The first one is meant to mimic log footage. Log footage has a lot of information. It's those dull, desaturated clips that you get but they contain a lot more information that you can extract from them. Now, this is not an original log footage. As you can see, it's MP4, and MP4 is a compressed format, but this will give us still a lot of information. All right, and log footage does work on Caden Live. So to get started, let's go ahead and jump into the color space. So at the upper right here, we can jump to color space, and let's go ahead and get started. I'll select the clip that we want to affect, and I'll be using a template that I have. So I'll jump over to the first star up here in the effects panel. Go to template and I'll be using the LM Basic CC. You can get this for free simply by clicking on the download button here and you'll get this pop-up window. And in here, you can go ahead and search using the search bar for LM and you'll find the templates that I've created. So I have a few and we'll be using two of them in this video. We can move the playhead to update the scopes and the vector scope and the waveform. Now I have a video dedicated on explaining these so you can check that out. I'll put the link in the description as well. And to get started, I'll double click on LM Basic CC. Now it will add all of these effects over here for us. Also quick note, if your color space does not look like mine, it's not a problem as long as you have the essentials. You can also modify your color space or any workspace really, and then go to view and you can save the layout or even manage your layout. If you create a new layout and you want it to show up at the upper right corner, make sure it's part of the top five options up here. All right, I'll disable the keyframes because we won't be keyframing anything. And now note that the order of the effects does matter. So whatever is on top is applied first and so on. So I'll switch over to the waveform over here. I have mine set to green because we see more information. And the first thing I'll do is up the saturation because Again, log footage is usually desaturated, although this is not log, it is meant to mimic log. So I'll simply crank this all the way up to 200. You can see we've got a bit better saturation over here. Next, I'll add a bit of contrast. So I'll go from 250 to, let's say, 280. Let's go to 300. And finally, we might even add a bit of exposure, although it's not fully necessary for this clip over here, but it is an option. We'll see if it works later. So I'll add 0.4 or rather 0.04. And we have levels down here. Input black level is going to drag the information closer to the dark. So whatever is already close to the darks so will be dragged down. Input white level will push the brighter information higher, making it brighter. The gamma controls the middle or the overall, if you will. You can also right click on these sliders to reset their values. You can hold down shift, left click and drag to move it in smaller increments or simply input the values here yourself. So I'm going to drop the gamma a little bit. We also have black output as well as white output, which do the opposite to the inputs. So if I push up the black output, it will push the information away from the darks. And if I slide the white output, it will push the information away from the brights. Okay. Now with that done, typically we'd want to do white balance. When it comes to color correction, you're looking to adjust the, the exposure, the U, and the saturation, if you will. So one way to go about this would be to find something that is neutral gray or white in our image. If we add these two white balance sliders on top here, let me go ahead and scale this out. All right, one controls, for one, you could use the color picker and find a neutral gray, maybe this ground over here, or look for something white in the clip, although we don't have that. Instead, we're going to use another method which relies on the skin tones. So I'll look for rotoscope, so rotoscoping over here, I'll add it, disable the keyframes, and I'll make a selection on the back of the hand here. All right, and if we look at the vector scope here, we can zoom in with this slider you'll see that it's leaning towards the yellow greens, right? And we can fix this up here with the white balance green tint. If we pull the green tint back, you'll see it pushes it into more of the reds. And in the other video that I have explaining the vector scope, I mentioned the skin tone line, which would be this line over here, the eye line. You typically want the skin tones to match that line of, okay, let's turn off the, the rotoscope. 
and the change is very minimal, but that should do it for now. And from here, basically what's left to do is for you to adjust the contrast, if you will. As you can see on the waveform, we can still pull the information closer to the darks. We also don't want to hit zero, leave a bit of room for color grading later on. And we can even brighten it a bit. And we could lower the exposure to avoid any form of clipping and push the white level or use curves, whichever works for you. But these are some basics that can help you get a nice, decent image if you are working with Log or even Rec. 709. But there we have it for the first clip. Now I'll go back to editing and I'll grab our second clip over here. And now this clip is Rec. 709, which means it, it's already been processed, compressed and all. So I'll drag it onto the timeline, make sure to have it selected, go to color space, and I'm going to add the same template, so the LM Basic CC. And if we look over here to the RGB Parade, even the waveform and the vector scope, we can see that it's already saturated, it's already pushed all the way to the darks, the brights are pushed all the way up and the colors are distributed. What we don't have a lot of is red in the highlights. We have some green. So there's a, there's a green cast or bluish green cast over everything. And we're gonna go ahead and fix that. Now this is where we really want to do the white balance, right? So to make sure that anything that is white in the image is truly white. So luckily for us, we have this metal over here, which we can assume is actually white. So let's go ahead and use the neutral color over here, let's make a selection. So grab the color picker, left click hold, drag over space. It will do what it can. So we can also disable this and try over here with the neutral grays and even try it on the floor, for example. Let's see what we get. Already it looks better than the first selection we did. And together they give us a even nicer result. So we can disable all the effects. So already here the white balance is looking much better. You'll see that we're going slightly outside of the broadcast range, which wouldn't really be an issue if you're not going to broadcast, but we can also fix that by lowering the saturation ever so slightly. So let's say for example, 110, and there we have it. And from here, what would be left to do is simply adjust the values really. So we can go inside of levels, push the black output ever so slightly, just to bring the information outside of the full black. We can do the same with the highlights, bring it down ever so slightly. Now the thing is, we're not going to recover much information as this is already processed. This, the image that we got already had a loss of information, but this way we can at least leave some room for any color grade that we might want to do later. So at this point, there's not really much left to do. We could drop the exposure and inside of the levels, maybe give it back the brightness. Okay. Now, if we were to use the same method as earlier, so use the rotoscoping, make a selection over what we know that is most likely to be white in the scene. And we check over here. You can see it still has a little bit of a blue cast. It's not too bad. We could use this white balance up here to modify it a little bit. So, so let's activate the rotoscope just to see how it's affecting our image, right? Now you don't have to see it this way. For example, we could simply put it to none. Let this be green. Green too is more visible apparently, or even use the original color. So you can see it over here and we can see, oh, we're supposed to reduce this a little bit. Okay, now no, it's not oversaturated. We're simply zoomed in, so let's zoom back out. You can see the reds are going, peaking ever so slightly. Because the reds are the one doing this, we could always go ahead and add a curve, for example. Curve, switch over to red. Let's make sure to place this above the saturation and drop the reds ever so slightly. So if we were to compare the before and after, so this is before and this is after. And that's basically it. So these are some quick ways you can go ahead and do your color correction. Uh, these little templates that I've uploaded should 
should be of use. You also have one for color grading that you can use afterwards. And for an image like this, for example, let's say you wanted to target just the yellows, there's the option of LM secondary HSL. It does add a bunch of effects. This is the one thing with Caden Live that you'd have to get used to. And here, for example, I'll just grab a piece of yellow, yellow on the floor. If you want to see what you're grabbing, simply deactivate the mask apply. And let's turn off this clip underneath. And now we should be able to see what we're grabbing. You can always adjust it to get a better selection. We also have the Gaussian blur over here to get softer edges. So for example, I'll put this to one, put this one to one, and then switch this to two. We can adjust the values of the yellow to grab more or simply adjust the red U delta, not too much. The blur is meant to make it softer, if you will, the selection. You could go for higher values, but it becomes a bit muddy. There's an alternative to the Gaussian blur that you can use. There's also the transparency for how much you want to be affecting the colors you're affecting. And over here we have lift gain gamma, but you don't have to use that. So we could either disable or delete it and go over and look for saturation. Place it after transparency. And from here we can desaturate the yellows, for example or saturate them more. But in this case, particularly, it would be desaturating. So we can pull this back in a bit and then reactivate the mask apply. And if we were to disable or enable saturation, it's very subtle, but it is reducing the yellows. So that's one way you can target specific colors. And with that action, we could actually now re-up the saturation or increase the saturation of our overall clip without having to worry for the yellows going out of the broadcast range. All right, that is it for this tutorial. If you learned anything or liked it, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you did not like it, there is a thumbs down option, but who clicks on that? Seriously though, if you have any questions or feedback, feel free to leave it in the comment section down below. Share this with friends and family if you know anyone who'd be interested in learning Caden Live. Remember, I have a Caden Live class over on Skillshare. The link is in the description you get the first month free of Skillshare by signing up with the link below. It is a referral link, uh, so that helps as well. And that is it. This is Nuxtux Creative Studio. My name is Jonathan, and I'll see you next time.